Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoy our shows, please like our videos and subscribe to our channel. And you can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lucas Alexander in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the 30th of October 2019, and our guest today is an investigative journalist, author, and public speaker from Vienna, Austria, who is campaigning against the rollout of 5G globally. He's also a researcher of the New World Order power structure and natural law. Stephen Weibrow. Stephen Weibrow, it's wonderful to have you on the show and welcome to Denmark. Thank you very much. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. Is that the first time you've been in Denmark? Yeah, it's the first time. It's the first time also to be in Scandinavia. Um, we started off in Oslo, um, had a conference there and uh, moved further to Sweden. And uh, from Sweden, it was uh, about one and a half hour ride to get here to Copenhagen via the wonderful and beautiful bridge that has been built here. So you are half Austrian and half British and have been living in Austria most of your life or what, or all of your life? Yes, yeah, so I was born in Austria, in Up Austria near uh, the city of Linz. And uh, I've been living now in Vienna since 2010. And uh, f yeah, I've been in Vienna ever since and still living there. And you're giving lectures uh, in German. Exactly, yeah. About what is going on in the world, about the New World Order power structure, trying to connect the dots, also about natural law and about 5G, which is your uh, focus at the moment, and that's why you are also here. And you are involved in the international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and in space. So please talk about 5G. Why is 5G such a hot topic at the moment? Why is 5G such a big problem? Isn't it just for a faster running internet connection? Well, that is the narrative that the media wants you to believe in, because um, in order to uh, yeah, substantiate the rollout of 5G, you need a narrative for that. And the narrative that is presented to us is that it's about uh, faster downloads, that it's a faster internet. You can have internet in real time um, because of the high bandwidth that they um, use for 5G. But it's about something completely different. And uh, what 5G really is, is undefined. It is not defined because um, in 2016, Tom Wheeler, the former chairman uh, and former president of the FCC, made it very clear in his speech in Congress that uh, we won't wait for the standards. So 5G is not standardized. There are no standards for 5G. So how can there be any real clarity about what 5G really is and how do you want to um, have a health study, for example, on the effects of 5G when it is not clearly defined? So when you look beyond the smokes and mirrors <clears throat> of what is always presented with any sort of subject, 5G is a total totalitarian surveillance, control, and weapon system that can be used for a totalitarian mind control system also, of which we know the patents for mind control uses through microwave, microwave weapons, 
Because the patents have existed since decades and can be uh, readily seen and are readily accessible on the website of DARPA, which is, to my knowledge, the most sinister organization on this planet. It's the military arm of the Pentagon. 5G is, as a quote from Alice in Wonderland goes, because we are in the twilight zone when it comes to 5G, everything that it seems to be, it isn't, and everything that it isn't, it is. So we have to uh, navigate through the maze and uh, through the manipulative narratives that are given to us by a co-opted media, a media landscape that has worldwide been taken over and who we cannot trust. And this is the reason why I do proper investigative journalism and uh, going around Austria on speaking tour to clarify this situation and I will not stop until this genocidal agenda is stopped. In your lectures you also talk about silent weapons for quiet wars, connections to the media, schools, entertainment, work and what you just said, mind control. Please explain silent weapons for quiet wars. Well in my estimate the most appropriate term that can be used for um, technically generated pulse modulated electromagnetic radiation is a silent weapon and it's a silent weapon for a quiet war and uh, the, the person I really uh, admire uh, when dealing with um, microwave weapons and uh, with this term silent weapons for quiet wars is Dr. Barry Trower who must know because he has been studying microwave weapons for 50 years and he worked for the Royal Navy and also for MI5 and MI6 and uh, he's lecturing on this issue all across the world and even consulting leaders of nations and also kings all across the world on this issue. And uh, this document is very interesting. It is um, a, a treasure, treasure drove of um, insight into this, uh, and one can call it without not really absolutely having to prove anything because it is a reality. Uh, it's a document that shows um, how this global conspiracy works and uh, this is a document that was found in an IBM copier in a copy machine um, in 1986 it was left in the copy machine and it was purchased by someone who found it and it's um, sort of a, a guideline um, to people involved in the conspiracy of how to mass mind control the global population through um, certain aspects and these aspects as you have alluded to are through the media and it states in the document to keep the public in um, a sort of childlike um, state to be preoccupied with things um, that are actually only interesting for 13 to 14 year old people and to have the, the public interest in these and to have no interest into um, matters of uh, real importance. It goes further that in schools where people get their education, I don't call it education because uh, education um, broken down etymologically means uh, from Latin ex which means out of and um, education comes from ducere from which we get the word the duce, uh, which is to lead. So education is to lead out of. And you are a math teacher, huh? Exactly. I'm a, uh, I was um, edu uh, I um, did my studies in mathematics and history. They want to keep people at school, and school is um, only the preparation for people to be inserted into a hierarchically structured system and to serve that system 
and uh, it says in the document to not teach people real mathematics, real history, and real law, and real economics. Now the first three parts, and uh, also economy, is exactly the things I look at deeply. Because um, I study natural law deeply, and natural law are universal principles. They are the hermetic principles, which goes back to uh, a mythological figure called Hermes Trismegistus. And these are principles. These are not interpretations. These are not ideological in nature. They are principles. They are the things that are missing in our society for our society does not have principles and therefore they subordinate themselves to an authority that is absolutely criminal on all levels. So I'm speaking clear words on what the state of the world is right now and that's the reason why the world is in the chaos that it is. And um, it is a silent weapon. People get indoctrinated to focus on things of no real importance and they never go to the things that are really important. And these are the subjects that I study in depth. So why do you think uh, people don't ask more questions about what is really going on in the world and are so preoccupied with everything Pro else? People are programmed from a very early age. We come in the, into this world and uh, we come into this world um, in a with a clean slate, with a clean vest. Very pure we come into this world. And we still have that connection to our true self, which is our soul. We have that soul connection um, from birth. And then what happens is that um, our parents, who don't mean that badly, uh, they are preparing us to step into the world and to be prepared for the world um, that they have lived in their entire life. Now, they have been programmed by their parents to subordinate one's true self to artificial parameters that we've never chosen by this system. So they tell you things like, Oh, you're going to become uh, a doctor because you have this, what you can do quite well, or they might see that. And uh, we get these parameters downloaded to us, what life is really about. No, it's not what life is about. It's about what life is about as a slave in this system. And uh, Continuing on from the programming we get from our parents, and again, uh, this is not to um, say that the parents are wrong or anything, this is just what happens, you know, because they don't know any better. And then we continue on into school. Now, at a very early age in England, for example, um, people go to school with, when they are four years old. And uh, at a very early age, an authority figure is telling you what is right and what is wrong and they, the authority figure called the teacher, has gone through the same programming as your parents have gone through and they give you a version of reality um, that suits the system. Because when the teacher is an open-minded teacher and uh, leaves you all the space in the world to explore and to question things, then, and it is becoming more and more rigid in that way. I've observed that uh, in my training to become a teacher at uh, the University of Vienna. It's becoming very rigid and um, even more open-minded teachers are finding it harder and harder to uh, do what they love doing and what they want to uh, bring to the students. Is that because academia has been gagged in a way? Well, absolutely. Academia has been taken over completely. And one can look at the origins of most universities. And I know the origin of the University of Vienna 
and it um, you will find the influence of the Jesuits for example they're very prevalent in uh, university systems uh, all across the world and uh, it's basically in all sectors of society if you look at the school system if you look at the university system if you look at the healthcare system if you look at the police if you look at um, courts if you look at um, the media if you look at politics no matter where you look at you have one thing that they've got in common and that is a control system that is a uh, pyramidically structured and, and the financial system place. of course and the financial system uh, which I've left out in order to focus on mm -hmm. because that is what is really driving this all of it or it's what driving on the level that we can see because governments don't print money by themselves without interest because then you could regulate it by a government that is per definition only responsible to manage infrastructure nothing more they are representatives to manage infrastructure and um, it's these financial institutions it's the trick they play is that they loan the money to the government on interest so let's um, let's dilute that to uh, something we can understand clearly the the financial institution a central bank gives the government a hundred euros for example but in return they want a hundred and ten euros back now on this basis this is the basis of uh, fractional reserve lending the 10 euros that they want back from the 110 that they want back from the government doesn't exist it has never existed and that is the very reason why almost every government or any country is in a, a state of debt slavery and they always are in that in debt which they then charge the population taxes to pay back that debt now don't tell me that the taxes are there to finance schools to finance uh, um, uh, hospitals or whatever because they are simply not it's because of this algorithm that has been triggered uh, which is based on debt slavery that so how about healthcare or welfare well that is totally owned by the pharmaceutical companies that um, are infringing more and more on people's rights to use alternative medicine. As I can experience in Austria, for example, they are voraciously attacking homeopathy and homeopathic treatment. Be um, and uh, when you compare that, for example, we are now in 2019, in the middle of the 20th century, 21st uh, century. <clears throat> and at the beginning of the 20th century I've read documents where you had multiple ways of curing things of having health treatment and it has been this monopolization this um, mo um, creating monopolies on all fronts including the health sector um, that has been totally taken over by the pharmaceutical cartel so that you <clears throat> only get treatment um, through um, the scalpel and medication. And uh, it's totally in the hands of the pharmaceutical companies because doctors are not even allowed to tell you of any alternatives. And Do you they think are they also know? trained to know that. Unless they find out themselves and inform themselves on other ways of treatment, then they won't know this information and when they are in a hospital I know this from my brother who's um, suffering from Crohn's disease a doctor has to tell him that he has heard of something that works that's all he can say he can't give a recommendation but still he does that well he does that but you can just see in the way he's naming it that there are ties there certainly a lot of doctors is not doing that well um, 
Absolutely, yeah. It's um, basically one gets a feeling for that it's on all levels. Um, we live in a complete control system, and 5G is uh, um, the the total um, umbrella that will technologically tie us into this control system. Mm -hmm. Can we assume that if we are exposed to media mass propaganda in, in general, that there is something not right going on, a secret agenda about, uh, behind it? And if something becomes like a big story affecting people, that we can assume that, that there's something not true there? Well, it's going to be like that in general, because uh, again, you only have to look into the fact that when um, someone working in the media is producing a news story, for example, I've been involved in promoting the international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and in space. Now, I've written to media organizations to cover this issue. They have not covered it for example. Okay, let's say that they cover an article about um, an international appeal, a scientist appeal with 122 or 123 scientific references um, on the dangers of um, 5G and that it is a planetary emergency about 5G. Now, if they cover any aspect of that, do you think that they would publish that when the general narrative all across the media is number one doctrine? There is no evidence for um, damages of electromagnetic radiation. That's one dogma. And you read it all across the media. Very seldom that you read something um, that looks into that. And you've got a general narrative. 5G, it's great. It's the future. And it's safe, they say. And it's safe. Supposedly. Supposedly safe. Why do you think they say that? A lot of scientists who are allowed to speak in the mainstream me media on the news, they say that it's okay. Fast or running internet, all of that. Why, why don't you think that there's any... Um, honest, decent reporting about this if there is any dangers or health effects from electromagnetic radiation and frequencies? Well, it's uh, what is called in the English-speaking world, they would open a can of worms, wouldn't they? After deploying and using uh, wireless systems and uh, wireless telecommunications and wireless internet for the last at least 20 years, let's say 25 years. If they admit now that there is a problem, which there is, then they would have to stand up to the claims that they have made for the last 25 years. If it is a danger and it, if it does cause health problems and illnesses, it would affect those who are reporting in the media and also scientists and everybody around the world and the politicians who agreed to roll it out globally. Exactly. It would have ramifications of, um, of uh, a huge spectrum and uh, absolutely huge Ramifications. So is it really a danger when all of these uh, people who are involved say yes to it, but they will be affected by it as well? They will be affected of it as well, but you have to look at this force, and I call it a force, that is rolling this out. A lot of the people that are rolling this out, they themselves are uninformed. They don't know about it. They are too ignorant. To know about it. They could be sent something to look into and they won't look into it because from the very basic way of how human society is structured, they're just working for their paycheck. It's their job. So they're listening to those scientists who say it's okay, there's no problem. 
Exactly. They have to listen to those scientists because they don't want to go down that road of questioning that. Because the organization they work for, if you are in a telecommunications company, for example, uh, you don't want to rock the boat, do you? The one to speak out about it because you risk everything. Ask Edward Snowden, for example, who had to risk everything to bring the information out that he was aware and his life changed forever. Now, who is prepared to do that? There is a consensus. That's the thing, Lucas. Uh, there is a general consensus on so many things um, which when you question that consensus you are questioning the whole narrative and people will go against you because when you start to challenge it you are questioning their own values their own behaviors their occupation for the choices they make in life and they don't like that they don't like to be reminded of um, the fact that something is very, very wrong in all of this. And just to give you um, an example of uh, the problem with electromagnetic radiation and uh, if 5G is dangerous or not. According to Professor Ole Johansson, who is a, a leading um, scientist in the field, we have about 5% um, of people in the world electro-hypersensitive. Now that is a political term. They call people electro-hypersensitive. Oh, you're electro-hypersensitive. Oh, poor you. There must be a problem with your body that you can't take this electromagnetic radiation. Oh, poor you. And uh, they don't get any compensation for it and they're not helped and they have to stay out of society because they can't even be in this soup and it is a soup we are living in an environment that is uh totally um it, it is a million million times uh i mean the levels are just huge um souped full of electromagnetic radiation in comparison to just let's say 50 60 years ago and they can't go into society. It is not able for them to function in society. Therefore, no one gets to know about their dilemma. And therefore, no one finds out that there is a problem. Now, let's go if it's dangerous. <clears throat> Another dogma, dogma number two, that said there are no long-term studies. Yes, there are. It's called the National Toxicology Program that was released last year in 2018 financed by the US government and these are studies that were done on frequencies relating to 3G and very clearly and conclusively without questioning uh, there were seen evidence clear evidence of brain tumors and heart tumors in rats now in the same year another long-term study was released Let's have a look at those results. Study by the Ramazzini Institute from Bologna, who also examined rats and their exposures to electromagnetic radiation with the same results. Now, we're talking about 3G here. And if, you, if this were a study on a, um, on a prescription drug, for example, you would have to take this prescription drug straight away from the market, like in no time this drug is deleted. So we have the clear evidence for that. And 5G will uh, expose the public to at least 10 times to 100 times more electromagnetic radiation from 5G base stations every 100 meters next to kindergartens, next to schools, next to your home, constantly, 24 hours a day, 365 days a week, together with what is now the latest number of 53,000 satellites that they're planning to put into the space orbit, into the ionosphere, to beam microwave frequency on every square centimeter of this planet 
and 5G in comparison to the other Gs before, in comparison to 4G, is a completely different technology. And according to four weapons experts, like Mark Steele, like Barry Trow, like Nancy Hopkins, and I uh, can't remember uh, the other man's uh, name, it is a weapons system. It is clear out there now, that's their estimate. Mark Steele, for example, He's been studying the situation in Gateshead in England now since 2013. They have already shown that in front of court that they have rolled out 5G since 2013. And he says, I'm an inventor of these military um, technologies because he invents uh, helmets, for example, as uh, protection on the battlefield. I know about this. This is my job. It is a weapon system. 5G is a weapon system and one of the elements of the infrastructure, the LED lights that are being rolled out all across Europe, he says they are absolutely toxic. They are absolutely going to destroy every biological form of life. They are incredibly toxic and there's no protection on them and they are everywhere. And so what about LED light bulbs? It's um, the spectrum of frequencies that these lights use. And these are toxic. It's blue light spectrum and they're toxic. And it's been shown. That also the toxic. ones we have in our homes. As far as I know, yes. I don't know if they're also uh, safe versions of that. But um, I, um, it is a very dangerous technology that has also not been tested on safety. Now, this on 5G, it has been established by Senator Richard Blumenthal in a Senate hearing in February 2019. It has been established without any doubt, because he questioned two representatives of the telecommunications industry. In a multi-billion dollar endeavor, a huge infrastructure project like 5G represents, there has been zero dollars invested into the safety testing of 5G. And as he says at the end of his speech, he says, so we are basically flying blind here, aren't we? So it has been established. And also not only 5G, 5G is the killer to all of that that has gone on before. 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, never been tested on safety, including the Wi-Fi system, which runs on the same frequency as a microwave oven. Now, Lucas, would you put your head into a microwave oven? Would you do that? Exactly. These are the frequencies that are being Not used. Not likely. These are the frequencies that are being used. Um, and according to Barry Trower, the microwave spectrum is the most toxic part of the spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum that we could use because of its capacity to interfere with water. And we are made of 70% water. There is a link here because microwaves work on changing the frequencies of water molecules and uh, um, transferring that into heat and heating up what you've got in the microwave. And uh, they've been, never been tested for safety. So we are in a, with 5G, definitely we are officially in a biological experiment. And uh, we have been in an experiment ever since wireless technology has been rolled out. But if it is such a great danger to our health, why is all the politicians, all the politicians are, have voted yes to the rollout? They said it was okay. It's all over the world. Nobody asks any questions. You have to understand that politicians, from, its, from their function, um, have to obey orders from people that, um, and I can quote the book from uh, Edward Bernays' Propaganda, that was published in 1928. And... Uh, you have to read that book. I mean, it's just, you, just read the, 
<laughs> just read the first page and you get the entire picture. But most of the politicians are not aware of what 5G is or whatever they vote for, right? A lot of the politicians here in Denmark were just told it was faster running internet as I started out with. Well, of course they don't know what 5G is because um, that's the reason why they have the job <laughs> in the first place. The most ignorant people get those jobs, you know. I don't have any respect for them whatsoever. Because, not because um, I don't have respect for human beings, I have a lot of respect for every single man and woman I meet and every child I meet. But I don't respect them because they are liars by their very, very nature. The, the, the fir on the first page he says, we are ruled by people whose names we've never heard, which comprise an invisible government. And that is the true ruling force of this country. And now that was published in 1928. That is global. It is a global network of a criminal cabal. It is intergenerational, it is international, and it is established. And Edward Bernays was not just someone who was making things up. He was the father of public relations, which is the very basis of mind control. And uh, he was also the nephew of Sigmund Freud, which, oh, there goes the web. There you can see the connections. Electromagnetic radiation was discarded as a psychological disease by Sigmund Freud. So this is how this web operates. And uh, yeah, we are being ruled by a criminal cabal that in its nature is absolutely psychopathic. And uh, I can beat them and everyone can beat them. You're talking about the Illuminati bloodline families behind a new world order agenda to, uh, or, um, to impose a one world government on the world. Every day when I get up and my eyes open, it's a 5G day. And uh, finding solutions to the problem that we're facing. I don't call them the Illuminati, Lucas. We are the Illuminati. Okay? What I call them is a cacistocracy from the caca they are the shit people and the shit people they only rule over us because they hide information from us why do they hide information because it is on the base level it is information that changes perception and it is perception that changes reality. They have to hide information, certain information. They want you to know about all sorts of things. They want you to know about the chemtrail program and how many details there are to it, all the military documents that admit to chemtrails, or geoengineering, sorry, that's the scientific term. Um, and But they don't want you to know about the knowledge that changes reality and uh, I call them uh, the cacistocracy and isn't it interesting that the word was taken out from the English dictionary a hundred years ago because it is exactly that which they are and I'll say it right into their face because no one else has the balls to do it and I don't care these people are shit people and I will um, we need to make a stand here. 5G is, and that needs to sink in, it is a war on you. It is a war on your family. It is a war on your friends and on the human race. We are a human family. And 5G is the red line which will not be crossed. And this is what I'm doing at this moment, because um, um, I'm about to um, defend that right to life, defend, activate the sacred masculine principle of self-defense. 
so that they don't cross that red line. And once that um, sacred masculine principle is activated, which is self-defense, then they can't move any forward. But do you think that the Illuminati is trying to um, impose a one world government on the world <coughs> through a new world order agenda, which all of the presidents and prime ministers and movers and shakers and everybody has actually been uh, saying in public? Yes, absolutely. Um, but it comes in a different form to from what I've heard from a lot of people in my perception. Everything that I'm sharing here is just my perception of things, which is ever changing the more I find out. And uh, there could be such, and I think they want to implement a world government, which is de facto already there in form of the United Nations. There is already a world government uh, run by, uh, from its structural organization run by the five Security Council nations that make decisions because they have the right to veto anything. Um, so that is de facto a world government. What they want to implement in my perception of the laborious amount of research is technocracy. So you can have uh, something that takes form as a world government, but eventually what they are implementing through 5G and 5G is the medium for that, they want to implement technocracy, which means technological control. And it's going to be run by AI, by artificial intelligence, for which 5G is the medium for, because to, in order to run AI and to run a system of control like the system that's being implemented in China, the social crediting system, you need the bandwidth in order to decode and transfer and exchange all the informations that they're gathering from you, from your smartphone, all the information they take from you to judge you and um, um, delete social credit points or give you social credit points. And uh, that's why what they're ultimately aiming for is uh, control under a system of governance called technocracy that is going to be run by AI. So is AI, or artificial intelligence, is that the real agenda behind 5G? Is that what they want to connect us with? Absolutely. 100%. Why do you think that is? Why do you think they want to, to, to do that to their own people? I mean, we're talking about high factions of the government secret government. Absolutely. Yeah, it's um, this is the point where you enter the twilight zone. Because um, which human being, you know, we are human beings, you know, I don't want to exercise control over you, for example, uh, or over anyone else. Who would want to implement something like that? Who would want a control structure of controlling absolutely everything? of sending 53,000 satellites into space, which will demonstrably um, damage the Schumann resonance of the planet, which every single life form on this planet depends on, including humans. Now, who, who would do that? Who would do that? This agenda is driving towards AI and the control of AI. There won't be a government to phone up anymore. <clears throat> which can already be observed in China. When you are on the blacklist, for example, when you're not able to buy a ticket for your flight or a ticket for the train, when you're on the blacklist in China, which millions are already, we're talking the now, this is uh, statistics from 2018, then you've got nowhere to hold anyone accountable to that or to... Um, um, phone someone up at the government and have a discussion with someone. No, it is the algorithm that is deciding that. And uh, who would do that? In my research, um, what we have on this planet is a situation where, and it's becoming clearer and clearer day by day, is 
that we are in the middle of an invasion of um, a force that wants total control over this planet and total control over human beings and it is this force that I have studied in detail. There is a lot of sources of history where you can study this force and it relates to what you've already mentioned to the Illuminati bloodline because you have to be in a certain bloodline in order to have um, the opportunity of rulership. Like the Queen of England is in a certain position that she is in because of her bloodline. And these things interrelate with each other. What is this force? Well, there are a lot of names for this force. It is a negative force. It is um, a very destructive force. And uh, it has been called, there's names for this force all across the world. All societies of humanity have been talking about this force. And it is now coming more and more into crystal clarity that the situation we find ourselves in is not a problem that humans create, but it is an invasion. From what? From a force that was called the Flyers in Mexico, for example, or the Jinn in the Islamic world, and what the Gnostics, which is a field of research that I go deep into, called the Archons. And it is a force that um, we don't see for the reason, because the only thing we can see is what reflects visible light. So there is a spectrum of visible light, which is a fraction, tiny fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is all we can see. And what we see in this world is animals, human beings and trees and whatever. But this force you cannot see because they are <clears throat> operating outside of this spectrum. So this force, the archons, the jinn, is also what the Christians call demons. Mm -hmm. It's not a physical force. It's not something that you would even be able to see if you could see more than, than what, what we are able to perceive through the three dimensions here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It is, um, well, there is a problem with physicality because um, what we call physical is uh, what we can see, which, for example, as I can see this color or any color, is because this object is reflecting light. It's everything in this reality is a frequency. And uh, these beings we cannot see because their frequency is uh, outside of the range of visible light, which we can see. And, uh, but they can take form um, as a human being. They can look the same but they're not the same from their psychology, from the way they are acting. Is that psychopaths, you mean? There's levels of psychopathy. And uh, from their characteristic traits, yes, they are psychopaths. Now there's levels and there are full-blown psychopaths that act like that in the world also, which in my research are 100% possessed from the unseen by what we would call a demon. And the demon is working through them. And uh, someone who would we see as a human being. But what is uh, driving the behaviors of that human being is something we cannot see. And uh, there's other levels of it which we don't recognize so much. And David Icke says that they can take form these archons, demons, as reptilians as well. And he says that they're, he say, he's saying that they might be working with um, <clears throat> factions of our government, the secret government. Exactly. I touch about, upon these things um, because I don't care what people think about me. You know, there is this um, 
aspect that uh, people make fun of this. Oh, he's talking about the reptiles and don't mention the reptiles. Well, I bloody better mention it because I'm about to get annihilated by an invading force, okay? And so I talk about this. From its base form, these archons and um, the notion of archons we get um, from the very beginning where this notion was presented was from John Lash who um, wrote the book Not In His Image from 2006 and he um, invoked this notion and then it started to get more widespread and uh, these archontic beings um, they manipulate human society from the unseen. Now, if you want to make a difference in this world, and uh, that's the reason why I talk about this, because uh, I'm trying to make a difference. I'm trying to understand what is really going on in this world. And if you really want to know what is going on in the world, you will encounter this manipulative force that is... Um, under um, all terms, uh, controlling this society from the unseen. And that is the reason why they are not detected as such. But there are people like me, for example, or people like David Icke, who go into these subjects, share these subjects, because we're not tied to any special interest. No one is paying me to do this job that I'm doing. And uh, when you suss the weakness of this force, then you can truly make a difference. And that is what I'm trying to do. Why do you think this force is operating on this three-dimensional plane? Why do you think it's allowed to be here, if true, these archons, demons? Well, that is a very interesting question. And it relates to the origin of this force. And this gets a bit mytholo uh, mythological, um, but according to the Gnostics, um, which uh, in the words of John Lamb Lash, who um, wrote the book Not In His Image, and he was the first, um, the first author of the Nagamadi texts um, to study and analyze the Nagamadi uh, library that were found in 1945 in Egypt, uh, in Nagamadi. And he was born in the same week that the Nagamadi scrolls were found. And he was the first one to study them without a theological background. Because um, he has a background of, um, similar to Joseph Campbell, of being a comparative mythologist, studying mythologies from all across, across the world. And in these texts, and it's very interesting because we hardly have any um, scriptures of a people, uh, a group of people that called them, um, that were called Gnostics. They themselves didn't call themselves Gnostics. They called themselves the Telestai, which um, basically translated means those who are aimed. They were a very special group of people um, who studied things from a holistic perspective to really get a grip on reality on what's going on and what's going on is the question I ask every day because I get new answers and I get deeper answers and deeper understandings that is Gnosticism as John Lash says uh, Gnosticism is not an alternative religion you can make it a religion when you um, make it dogmatic I don't do that um, it is, uh, Gnosticism is not an alternative religion, it is an alternative to all religions. And in these texts from the Gnostics, and they were eradicated from history by the Roman Catholic Church. As we can see, for example, in the Battle of Mont Segur from 1266, where the Cathars, who were Gnostics, were slaughtered to death, the same as in the ancient world, it was the people um, that ran the library of Alexandria who were Gnostics, like Hepatia, who was a genius woman uh, studying different fields of science. Um, that is a Gnostic um, 
way of doing things. And in the Nag Hammadi scrolls, which were found that are dated to um, 400 uh, AD, and uh, in this Nag Hammadi library, one fifth of the text was about a negative demonic force, which was called the Archons, that are manipulating human society. And uh, they explained the workings of the Archons and how they manipulate us. And it relates directly to mind control. And mind control relates directly to 5G because 5G offers the um, uh, opportunity for the first time to create a mind control grid, which is called the smart grid. In other terms, called the cloud. And you can quote Ray Kurzweil for example, coming back now from the Gnostics to this age here, because they're all interrelated, but they don't want you to access your right brain and connect the dots on things so you get a clearer picture of what's going on here. Ray Kurzweil, when you read his book, and he was the former chief executive of Google and um, in the technology department also, a very, very important man for Google, and Google is not anyone, it um, dictates what you read and it's manipulating the algorithms so you don't read what they don't want you to read. Um, and he was also, interestingly enough, the co-founder of the Singularity University of Silicon Valley. And in his book, he openly states that he wants to connect the human mind with artificial intelligence. He talks about that our thinking will be a mixture between biological and non-biological thinking. And uh, he says that's the future of humanity because we transcend our limitation. Now, when he wants to do that, I'm not going to stop him, but I've got a, a, I've got a real problem when he's trying to decide the future of humanity, my future, what I can decide for myself, I've got a big problem with and I can quote also the same um, ideology, which is transhumanism uh, from Elon Musk. Just to stay on the topic of Kurzweil, okay. um, what do you think he knows that the rest of the population is unaware of? Well, he's just following orders from his masters. Who are they? The Archons. He, yeah, but he doesn't speak directly to the Archons, I would assume. Well, he probably is 100% controlled by them and he doesn't even know a difference between an Archon and a so, human. So is he part of a, a, an Illuminati network, you mean? Do you think that? Yes, there is a Attending network. Attending secret society meetings. Well, I don't know about that. I only um, analyze from the point of his ideology, which is transhumanism which for me is a major concept to grasp. They want to um, delete and eliminate the humanity that we are and change it for something that is a synthesis. And Elon Musk talks about this too, who is one of the people that are sending most of the satellites up, which is a genocidal agenda on the planet. And as I say, it's an invasion of our planet and humanity. And Elon Musk talks about the same thing. He has created the uh, company Neuralink to connect, again, the human brain with artificial intelligence. And this is the thing we need to focus on. We don't need to focus on if there are sects that we call an Ill Illuminati that are having satanic rituals, which they are, and that has been established by whistleblowers that have been at these um, ceremonies, but I choose to focus on the real things that are driving this agenda. It is AI, it is the uh, takeover of our minds, it is the takeover of our humanity, of our nature, of everything we love. And this is the ideology of transhumanism. And it is also directly linked to the ideology of what you call the Illuminati and what I call the cacistocracy. Um, of Satanism, because that's what these people are. It is not what I call it, it's what it is called by most researchers. But you talk, but you 
you choose to also talk a lot about the archons and a lot of people who are focusing on the topic of 5G and artificial intelligence, when they hear all of that, they must try and connect all of that as well to the archons and below that, Illuminati, you call it? I would call it an, uh, a negative force um, and I would give it the name of an archontic force. Mm -hmm. Behind a new world order agenda? Absolutely. Most people who are talking about the New World Order agenda are talking about this one world government, but it goes beyond that then. Absolutely, it goes beyond that. Uh, we really have to open our minds and that's why I'm sharing what I'm sharing because I, um, I want to get this information out and people, again, make of it what you will. You know, I'm not here to tell you what is reality and what's going on. I'm trying to find out myself. And we only get along further when we share our insights, stop fighting till he's a shill or he's a shill and he's crazy. That doesn't bring us anything. When you're facing an annihilation event, we need to bring everything to the table, start communicating again instead of discussing and dissing each other. And uh, that's what I bring forward. And I very much suggest that people look into the aspect of the Archons because is it artificial intelligence or is it archontic intelligence? And I would say, because I've studied mathematics, we have, um, uh, we have uh, um, the same here. So the archon energy or frequency that they operate on could be artificial intelligence. Absolutely, look at uh, certain people um, in politics or in the financial sector. Um, look at their behavior, look at it closer. It is completely robotic and uh, it is absent of any creativity or any life. And that is the aspect, what these archons most fear. It is the people that let everything go and um, have the spirit of a maverick in them because they don't care what other people think about them, they just do. But if there is, a, let's say, a creator force, what people call God or source of force there, why would that creator force allow something like the Archons or reptilians, if you go into alien territory really, why would they allow those beings to operate on this earthly realm or beyond that? That is a very good question and I um, go back to the uh, mythology that I alluded to before. Now everything as it is, it just is. So we have a world that, goodness me, is in chaos. Refugee crises. Um, caused by illegal wars and uh, the policies of the World Bank and IMF. Uh, and it's wreaking havoc on the Western world. And uh, it's also being weaponized, the refugee crisis. I have nothing against any foreigners. I'm not racist, but this is an agenda. Um, and now we have the rollout of 5G. There's so many things I could mention. I'll just stick with 5G for the moment. Why would that happen? Now, we live in a world of chaos. What's going on here? Why would a creator force, which I would call source, because um, I don't give a, a, a picture to it, it's just source. Everything is an emanation of source. Now, in the Gnostic intel, okay, and um, this is just the way I view at the situation, I see myself as an agent for the planet. That's what I am, because I love nature. Uh, it's doing beautiful things, giving us crops with the sun together. These are the forces I serve, because they are real and they are natural. Now, in Gnostic intel, in the Gnostic narrative, the mother goddess Sophia incarnated as the earth. She was a goddess that was, um, as they described it, in a heavenly realm outside of this reality where the gods reside, shall we say. And this realm was called the Pleroma. And uh, she fell 
from that pleroma. I don't want to go into too many details right now, but she fell from that pleroma. Um, and this fall, which also relates to the fallen angel narrative, um, and she fell from the pleroma and incarnated into the body of the earth. Now I'm talking in mythological terms. Whatever one makes of it, I highly suggest to read the book from John Lamb Lash for more details. Now she incarnated in the earth and her fall from the heavenly realm created a distorted energy field because she had fell and the horror and uh, and uh, the uh, something uh, of a thought form, a distorted thought form, created a distorted energy field, which created a distorted perception, which can be summarized as an error. Somebody had cocked up, something happened. And this error, because everything in our reality is energetically based, this error and this uh, distorted energy then manifested into what we now call archons which can manifest in form as a reptilian entity or as a gray alien entity but from its base form like everything it is a distorted energy it is a distorted perception the same as a the, the behavior of a psychopath is originating from a distorted perception. And uh, this is the terms or the view that the Gnostics give on this situation. And uh, a parasite feeding on human beings, anger, exactly. anguish, fear and hatred. Because they don't have um, the creative capacity as we humans do. They don't have the connection to the source or the connection to the earth naturally as we humans do. But how could this even happen if there is a source which is, well, complete and good, yeah. po a positive energy? Um, well, I, give, I, give, I just gave an explanation as to the energetics of what possibly happened again i say i don't know what really happened um it's concepts i'm dealing but this with. could be symbolic right it could be symbolic yeah but maybe let's look at it from a different angle maybe now i'll ask you this question how does the source experience itself if everything is from one energy source and we're all one, as is often said. How does the source experience itself? Through reflection. It's the only way a source can experience itself, is through reflection, through mirror reflection. Point of view. Point of view, exactly. And maybe, from another angle, maybe this game of good and bad is an experience for us to experience and to eventually transcend it. Now, from this perception, we live in the third dimension and which is controlled by this negative force at this point, as I'm saying, and they keep us trapped in this realm that we're occupying through the manipulation of our perception and they keep us, so to say, in the box and they trap us in the matrix which they control. Where we are in a, on, a, uh, on a planet where duality is a reality, yin yang, e everything is either, well, black or white really. Exactly. But good this, or bad. But this is one form of perception mm -hmm. um, to see everything as good and bad or you could also look at it as, um, is it the is it love and the absence of love now you're going into the realm of oneness where you can integrate the yin and the yang the duality and through the integration of the light side and the shadow side which Carl Gustav Jung 
in psychology went deep into and he said uh, you to become enlightened you don't imagine figures of light but you make the darkness conscious which is all about shadow integration work and when one integrates the shadow side which we all have i know at least from my um, point of perception i have a shadow self and i'm working on it which is emotional processing shadow integration work and when you combine these two polarities of light and dark inside of you you can transcend the matrix and you can transcend the entire control system and once you put the spotlight in the darkness nothing can work in secret there anymore exactly so instead of focusing too much out there and who's the baddie i just spot them call them a cacistocracy because that's for me which makes most sense as a definition but i don't hate them i get my willpower my righteous anger which is the strongest force in the universe when you can channel it why anger you just speaking against that choosing love and well goodness mm -hmm. no i'm not talking against that because we have many more emotions but love and i'm definitely not falling into the new age trap so do you think it's it's a new age trap absolutely oh just imagine positive so thoughts. anger so anger it anger can be constructive you think Absolutely. I learned this from one of the best teachers I've come across in my entire life. I respect this man highly. His name is Mark Passio. And he's, for me, the best researcher on natural law principles and what's really going on in terms of natural law. And things are totally different to what we think it is. Now, to only always be in love and hug everyone, and uh, that's a load of bullshit, okay? Um, love sometimes comes in hard fucking love okay because there is not only love in that sense eventually everything is love but on higher dimensions when everything converges together and everything is basically love yes but whilst we're having the experience here on the third dimension we have many more uh, emotions um, than love now you're talking about presentation right how you present your information um, no, what I mean is, and I want to go into that, is the new age hijack. Now you have to new no, age. But you don't have to be a high. You don't have to be a new, a so-called new ager in order to not present your information with anger. Yeah, I don't present my information with anger. No, but some people do. That's true. Absolutely. And you just said that anger can be used. Your your absolutely your righteous anger. Absolutely, but it's when the emotion of anger goes through me and I actually feel it. But how and will then people perceive that? How will they, they would perceive it that um, when anger comes up to me, instead of throwing it at the other person that's just made me angry, I leave it in there, boiling in there. And through only feeling that emotion and not getting into the head, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this because I always should be in love. I just feel it and let it go. And uh, through these emotions, by feeling the emotions, you gain access to the life force energy that is underneath them. It is energy, of course, because you can feel it. And that righteous anger then can be used as a power source of incredible power where you say, I'm not accepting this. You're not fucking me around. You're not fucking the planet around and you won't destroy this planet and I will make a difference. That is righteous anger and it leads to right action which needs to be taken and this is what I'm about to take as of tomorrow because tomorrow is a very special day. It's Halloween. Halloween. Um, and Vienna is going to uh, get a very strong message from my righteous anger, which doesn't have to be expressed towards any human being. It's expressed through my writing of what I'm going to be okay. sending tomorrow. Please talk about that. One of the um, most hidden information um, on this planet is the divine masculine principle. And it's the principle of self-defense. And it's expressed, for example, in the gun ownership issue in the US. Now, I don't own a gun. 
you know? Maybe I should be, but I don't feel like I'm that much under threat. That's the thing. I don't have a gun. It's not I, allowed in Europe. It's not allowed in Europe, exactly. In Austria, you can apply for one and have one. Really? Yes, you can. Um, a friend of mine has one at home, for example, and it's registered. For hunters? Also for at home. You can also have a gun at home. Yeah, in Switzerland also. Mm. And, uh, but the principle behind it is the principle of self-defense, to stand up for yourself. Now that has been deleted nearly from the man, for example, to actually stand up for yourself and do something. But I thought you were talking about standing in your truth and presenting your truth, argumentation and through, well, communicating your, your insight. Absolutely. I do communicate my insights in calmness. Sometimes I also get excited, which is natural, but I stay with myself and I don't harm other sentient beings, which is a, a moral way of living, living in right livelihood by not harming other sentient beings outside of you. But um, I communicate this information in my lectures and tomorrow I will... Uh, um, I will have uh, um, a course of action I take, which could possibly change the world. So I've talked about the divine um, masculine principle, which is the principle of self-defense. And I am notifying, as of tomorrow, every single government representative of the Austrian government, from every parliamentarian, prime minister and Prime Minister's office, the Chancellor's office, and the uh, President of Austria. And I will be sending them a notice of liability, which is the needle in the hay where you have to research enormous amounts of times and have a really open mind to find out that it's actually about liability which the Illuminati, as we've been talking about today, and the government representatives are absolutely fearful when you invoke that. Because it works like this. It's all about responsibility, which is the ability to respond to something. Now, when you think that you can't change anything, you're under mind control. You can actually change everything and it depends on you and the level of work you've done on your inner self on yourself and feeling those emotions and alchemizing the emotions inside of yourself that you can go up the levels of action and i don't have any fear of holding them liable and telling them that you will be thrown into prison when you continue with the 5g rollout that is illegal under um under a document from uh, a law company in Denmark called uh, Bon Advocato, um, which states that the 5G rollout is illegal under national, international and EU law. And uh, I basically tell them, you are, um, with this document, you are noticed of your liability and you either stop the 5G rollout now or there can be serious consequences for this illegal behavior. What will those consequences be? Uh, the consequence is that, first of all, you have to send out a notice of liability that they've been noticed. This is sort of like um, having the net around them ready to snatch. Because once they've been noticed that they are creating havoc, you invoke the responsibility that they have. But what do you think their response will be, if any? They are responsible because the ones that can stop the agenda is them. But you have to force them to do that by reminding them that they are personally liable and that they can end up in prison by conducting an uncontrolled experiment which is illegal under the Nuremberg Code from 1947, where Nazi scientists were hanged for experimenting on human beings. And that should be clear to them. And as you know, possibly, that is very deep in the historical uh, psychology of Austria. And I invoke that. I tell them, I don't want it to come that far. 
But when you are doing a biological experiment on your population, then you are going to suffer the consequences, not from the actions I take. All I'm doing is I'm invoking it and the laws of the universe will take care of you. So it's that, the law of the universe, it's, it's that you're talking about. Absolutely. It is not them that, that you can bring them to justice. Yeah. I just invoke the, um, the liability that they have because, again, the mind control version of that to this reality, that they are liable and that they have responsibility, the mind control version of that would be, oh, they always get away with it. Oh, they don't can you get away with anything. Don't you think they'll just dismiss such a letter or such a thing that they're getting? Well, that's the beauty about it. I don't care. I just do my part in what I do and I totally let go of it. But I'll continue further in my endeavor of notifying every single um, Bürgermeister, which is on the local level, who thinks he can't do anything because it's dictated by them. But then I'll tell them they are acting in ways which shows that there is no rule of law anymore because it is illegal. It's called Rechtsbankrott in Austria that they are going against their own law, which is the basis for their existence even. And this is how it works. I send it off to them and uh, they will be well advised to read what I'm saying because if they don't read it, they're liable anyway because I've got the receipt that they've received it. I've got the proof that they've received it and it's up to them to read it. It is just me doing this action, letting go completely and karma will fuck you up. Speaking of karma, you talked about the archons. Do you think that there is this, what some people say, that these archons have uh, orchestrated this other rail, this this uh, light frequency that we go to at the point of death. What happens to us when we die? A reincarnation, soul factory, soul harvesting uh, place called heaven, so that they can bring us back to earth again and we'll stay within the matrix. Well, that can only happen when we don't know who we are. And uh, when we identify with um, whatever role we are playing here and all we need to do is, as I learned from your fantastic interview with George Cavasilas, is you just have to relax into your heart soul essence. When the t technological world outside of you is going bonkers and everyone's on their smartphone and they're full of stress, do the opposite of what they're doing. Stress, stress, stress relax into your heart soul essence and uh, when you are in your heart because the system is only running up here the whole system it's these thought forms that you where you have 97 percent of the thoughts you thought the day before you're thinking again today and the next day and uh, the system in its entirety this whole matrix works up here when you stay stuck in these stories when you let go of those thoughts and that is a process to do continuously because the mind control program which I call or many people call the matrix is so strong if you um, continually do a practice of discipline to relax into your heart and to relax, in, relax into your heart soul essence then you slowly in this process which also relates to shadow integration um, by dissolving these onion rings of emotions and you just face them and you just feel them, let them go, be yourself. So if and yourself. when you become then aware you... of this, then you can say no to it, you can choose otherwise, yeah. if that is a program exactly. by the archons, exactly. the heavenly realm, exactly. reincarnation. And this is the way you transcend the matrix. Right. I think that's the only way you transcend the matrix is through the mm. heart, because this is who we are. We are heartists. All of us, we are creative. We are creative and the Archons are not. And we can only manifest the world that they want when we stay under mind control and follow orders. Don't follow orders. You might have to suffer for some while, but when you do the shadow integration work and you connect to your heart, the universe will reward you and you will experience life for the first time and it's exactly what you just said saying no 
this is what I do in my notice of liability. And uh, after I send it off, I will completely let go and I have invoked the divine masculine principle which will do its work by itself. I don't have to do anything to it. This is what I the came here to The divine masculine. A lot of yeah. people talk, talk mostly about the divine feminine. Yeah. Do you think there's an agenda behind the, the feminist movement that we see again here in 2019? Absolutely, they are interlinked and it relates to the uh, um, perversion of the divine masculine and the divine feminine principle. Both of them. Because it's both. It's both, absolutely. It's the divine masculine and this for the viewers, the solution to 5G is the Vitruvian Man of Leonardo da Vinci. It's right there in front of you. And you see this picture for the first time in another way. And you stretch that out like that. You stand up, you stretch your hands, and you say, this is my space. I and my existence is source-based. No one is allowed in my space, invader. And that's the divine masculine. And we have That's both. the divine feminine mm -hmm. when you let go. And what I do tomorrow is divine masculine. Don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with my world. Sorry for the language. Excuse my French. But that's the way it is. We're in this uh, emergency situation and we need to deal with it. I defend myself. This is my space. I'm in connection with the mother planet. I'm doing what, um, co-creating a new world together with her, the new paradigm. And then I send it off and I let go completely. And as I learned from Max Egan, who started me on this journey two years ago, where I found out what a horror 5G is. You have no stake in the outcome after you do the action, because then the universe will work. We have to integrate then the, both of the masculine and the feminine side to our personality. Exactly. And like, our being. Study this, try it out yourself. This is my space and whatever you want to add to it. And it's those divine masculine, divine feminine. I see. And it's um, the Vitruvian man, which symbolizes also the pentagram, uh, which is the five the solution to 5G and uh, five pointed star, five pointed star. And what is the inversion of the five pointed star of the pentagram? The inverted pentagram There's no accident. It's the symbol of Satanism. So you stand up coming right. from Saturn, huh? coming from Saturn. Exactly. It's Saturnism and the five, the upright pentagram have a backbone. Don't fear because they're little boys and girls. The, um, Donald Trump's or the other uh, so-called leaders, puppets. No, you have the power and don't think you are. No, you are. Practice that. Believe in yourself and love yourself first, like you love your, your friends and everyone around you. And then the 5G is solved with the pentagram and the G, which stands for the same G as in Freemasonry, which is the generative principle, which is generator creativity. That we can't think our way out. We can only create our way out and we have to create a new world together, Lucas, and it will be lovely. But how can we do that when the world is practically going under because of climate change? Well, there we are in mind control again, aren't we? Please talk about your view of what is happening in the world today with climate change. It relates to what we alluded to at the very beginning of this interview, which is narratives. Now, how do you want to hide a genocidal agenda like 5G? You hide that through a counter narrative. Oh, the apocalypse because of climate change that is primarily caused by CO2 and is called anthropo uh, anthropogenic climate change. So you think it's like a decoy, a, a diversion away from 5G, 5G? Well, it most obviously is because all of these climate change activists 
fail to notice that the number one binder of CO2 are trees, which means in their version of reality that CO2 is the prim primary generator of climate change, in their version of reality, which is totally skewed, it would make sense that you plant more trees, wouldn't it? Because it takes the CO2 out of the air and binds it. Well, you can't have that with 5G because according to a scientific paper from the University of Surrey from 2016, up to 70% of the 5G signal is absorbed by vegetation, by trees. So if you want your self-driving cars, you have to cut down the trees. Now, are the climate change activists saying anything about this fact or talking about 5G and the absolute havoc and devastation it's going to cause on not only the climate, but on the planet and nature and everything alive? Are they talking about it? I don't think so, because they have been had with a narrative that has been disproven for a long time. It's a joke. Just look up climate gate. It's been shown that all these models have uh, completely been manipulated and ask some of the people who believe in this um, uh, hypothesis with CO2, ask them, how about the medieval warm period? Which industry caused that? Two degrees um, higher temperatures that we had in the medieval age, which is documented. Which industries caused that in the medieval age? With horses running around. What caused that? So these are the sort of things that, and the questions, questions we should ask. And we would find out that it's a total hijack of, again, perception from the real issues. But if it's not man-made climate change, do you think there are natural climate changes going on? Absolutely, because when you flip the whole thing, um, I don't think climate uh, stays constant, does it? So there is climate change. I'm not a meteorologist, but I can observe that when the sun comes out, it gets warmer. And according to a lot of scientists, even 30,000 scientists have... Um, uh, sign up a petition against the theses the, that were generated by Al Gore in his Inconvenient Truth, where a lot of the predictions have never come into place and are not based in reality. According to a lot of scientists, it is sunspot activity that is the primary cause of climate and not CO2. And they don't talk about water vapor, which is the primary ingredient of our air. Now, the whole thing's uh, totally, I mean, a four-year-old can dissect that uh, when you give him the information. Well, a 16-year-old uh, girl named Greta Thunberg uh, seems to think otherwise has been and has been promoted heavily around the world and is up for the Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize now. Why do you think they're doing all of that and this mass propaganda if it is not true? Well, you have to look at the outcome and leave all of the um, other information out. What state do they want to have you in? Oh my God, climate change. What are they going to do about it? And it's problem, reaction, solution. They keep you in a state of terror. They don't give you any solutions. They want you in a state of terror because then they can give you the solution, which is we have to make everything more effective, which means smart cities, AI, and there are a lot of people in the climate change arena that talk about solutions relating to AI. And they, these two things directly come together because to have a solution to climate change, they will promote uh, the 5G agenda. They won't say 5G, but they'll say, we have to make those things more effective. This is a very unsustainable way of living. So we need a sustainable world, which means we need to make it more effective, which is Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development Goals, and in everything which is um, um, implemented through the UN, and uh, in every single program of the UN is the rollout of 5G. It was UN Agenda 21, and now it's UN Agenda 2030. How do you think the world will be different at that time if 
5G is rolled out? Well, no one knows that because they're lying on all fronts, also with the timeline. What I can see in Austria, this, this thing is, going, is being rolled out very, very quickly. And uh, that's the reason for the action that I'm going to take tomorrow. And I'm very sure I'll be successful because I have to be, because that is my perception and that creates the experience of my reality. And uh, if we let it happen, I believe we are going to stop it because I'm at the forefront of it and uh, we, we won't be experiencing that. We have made a decision to live a different reality without 5G and we'll do everything until that is that way and we'll be um, challenged along the way but we welcome the challenge and uh, we'll live in a new paradigm of peace, love and prosperity and um, then I don't have to th even think about what the world might or might not be because it's always my choice and it will always come back to the choice every individual is going to make. So what is your most important message for people listening to this right now? What we most forget are two things. Number one, never get your fix on reality, what the masses are doing. People always tell me, oh, they're not doing it. Oh, how are we going to explain it to them, to them and them? I'm not interested in them. I'm interested in you. Are you doing it? And it's one individual at a time who decides to awaken from this nightmare that we're in. Wake up by connecting to your heart. The awakening is not something that's happening out there. It is happening inside each and every individual, one individual at a time. And the number one thing I can share with people is because we all love our family, we all love our friends, we always forget about ourselves, don't we? Give regularly the love to yourself. Don't believe in those thoughts that are coming from the matrix. These are not your thoughts. They might relate to your past, but you didn't consciously choose them. Therefore, they are not you and they are matrix programs. Let go of them and just love yourself regularly, constantly, as often as you can. And you will generate a new reality when you do that. And you will connect to the natural internet, the natural reality, the new paradigm where we are in symbiosis, not with AI, but with the natural world and our mother planet and disconnect from the internet, the matrix that is run by AI. If people want to sign the international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and in space, how can they do that? And how can they contact you if they want you to come to their place or to their country for a lecture? I write my articles for a magazine. Um, and uh, we're about uh, very close to getting a new website, but we've not had time for that because I'm focusing on this job at the moment now. So we'll have a website soon. People can contact me via email uh, through steveY at gmx.at. So that's Steve Y with a V, uh, W H Y at gmx.at. Great. It's been very fascinating and very intriguing to have this conversation with you. And I wish you the best of luck in your fight against the rollout of 5G and everything else. Stephen Weibrow, thank you for doing this interview with Age of Truth TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you very much to Stephen Weibrow and thanks to all of you for watching Age of Truth TV. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.